What's going on my PT peeps and my Walking Dead family? Welcome to the PT channel. I'm one Eye Bry, back to talk about the Walking Dead Season 9 comic stuff and the awesome connection that you might have missed right here. I have to admit, I missed it the first time I watched the episode, but Eric Johnson posted a comment on the channel and it's pretty awesome. Obviously, spoiler warning for the Walking Dead Season 9 comic stuff and general spoiler warning, but here we go. So if you look at the scene right here, it looks a lot like a scene that we saw on a comic cover Issue one, right there, Rick Grimes going past a broken glass window of a shop that has mannequins in it. It looks pretty similar to what we saw in episode 909. Clearly it's Rick right there and not Negan, but if you read the comics, did you catch it the first time? Like I said, I missed it because I was so focused on Negan and the sign and this, but it's pretty obvious that if you look at the storefront here, it's pretty clear that The Walking Dead did it on purpose. You can see mannequins in there, and once Negan goes inside the store, you can see that is a clear connection with the comic. And if you don't read the comics, you probably didn't know that, you probably didn't even think of a possible connection. But as Negan walks towards the storefront, it's kind of like, oh man, this is kind of what Rick would probably be doing in the comic. And it's kind of a cool connection because the comic is the comic and the show is the show. And I like the remixes that are done on the show and we can see more of a backstory. Also, since this is almost representative of comic issue number one, one, what if we followed Negan from the very beginning and it wasn't Rick Grimes, it was Negan. I don't know Negan's last name, but if it's the Negan story, that would be interesting, right? You can see he steps into the store, the mannequins, the storefront, the clothing, the racks. It's pretty obvious that it's a clear connecting point with the first comic issue. I can't believe I missed it the first time, but I was so focused on Negan and where he was and what he was doing and the dogs and the leather jacket and the leather goods. And it was like, whoa. And then you put two and two together and you're like, man, that's pretty awesome. I mean, I think it's awesome. Hopefully you do as well because the show is going back to its comic roots when they can. I mean, they do it every season, but as Negan walks around in these pictures, you're like, man, that's the shop that Rick went right by in the comic cover of issue one. And I don't know if it's Angela Kang, or Greg Nicotero, who directed the episode, or Scott Gimple, whoever, but they did a great job here, and I think it's cool. It's also fitting that it's Negan and not Rick, because Rick's off the show. Negan could be around for a long, long time. Do you want to see Negan become a good guy, save Judith, save Michonne, save Daryl? I mean, he's got to do something great, right? I want the character to have a good redemption arc storyline. Some people are like, he's never going to be able to redeem himself. He killed Glenn and Abraham. How could he do that? But when I see these mannequins, I instantly went to the movie I Am Legend because the main character, Will Smith, has interactions with mannequins. And I don't know if that's where they got it from or what. But again, the zombie apocalypse isn't real. It's fictional. The Walking Dead doesn't own the rights to the zombie apocalypse. So they could have been influenced by a bunch of different things. But Negan going inside the shop is pretty cool. It's like, man, what if? What if this? What if that? It's got me thinking, what if Negan was the main character instead of Rick? Would we hate Rick and love Negan and vice versa? It's just a good thing, food for thought discussion. And I definitely love that about it. But boom, right there, issue one with the comic cover of the broken windows, the mannequins, the storefront. And I think it's pretty cool. What do you think of it, guys? Did you see it? Did you miss it? Did you read the comics? And I thought it was pretty cool. Again, I missed it the first time. So going back and watching it again and people posting comments, and that's really what this channel is all about. Community, discussions, theories, having an awesome time talking about a great show. And also I saw a recent article where Greg Nicotero was interviewed and he talked about episode 909 because he directed the episode. And he talks about the graveyard scene. They had to cut out a big fight sequence between the walkers, whispers, and the group and he was psyched because it's like this is going to pay homage to George Romero and Night of the Living Dead in the cemetery and we never saw that before in The Walking Dead and Nicotero was very excited to talk about Romero and any way The Walking Dead can connect to George Romero's work it's awesome and I got a couple more things let's talk about Yumiko's arrows how did Alpha and the Whisperers get the arrows and I mean right now it's up for debate because we just don't know but Alden and Luke were basically set up by Alpha there was an arrow in the tree, and then an arrow that way, and then another arrow that way, and they were being led by Alpha. So where did Alpha get the arrows? In my Easter egg video, I initially thought they were coming from Yumiko as she shot them in walkers and whispers, and maybe even Daryl, they could be the same arrows, but ultimately the arrows were set up by Alpha and the whispers to lead someone, it just happened to be Luke and Alden, to their direction where it was set up as a trap. You're like, yep, there it is. And Alpha has the last arrow in her hand. 
which is pretty smart. It's a pretty great trap. Alpha is very cunning and pretty smart. But how do you think she got the arrows? And I only think there's two ways that Alpha got the arrows. They went around and they took the arrows out of the dead bodies and walkers and whispers that Yumiko shot, maybe even Daryl shot. It makes sense, right? Especially because there would be people trailing them and they'd be going after them and you would find the trail of dead walkers and whispers, maybe even went to the cemetery to get them. But some people are so politely saying that it could be from Magnus Camp. Remember, all their stuff was thrown all over the place. And if Yumiko had a bunch of arrows, the whispers could have came through there and got the arrows. I'm not sure how many days or what time frame it's been since Judith saved Magna's group and Michonne and DJ brought them back to their stuff. It could be a couple days, which fits the timeline. So let me know your thoughts. What do you make of that? How did Alpha get the arrows? Also, here's a great picture from season nine, episode nine from AMC and The Walking Dead. If you look to Negan's left, the hand he has the shovel in, you can see the little cross jewelry holder type thing to Negan's left and it looks very small. So initially I thought maybe it was kind of bigger and it was the cross that was on Carl's grave, but it looks too small to be that. But I see a possible connection there. Maybe it was just Easter egg or maybe it was me reaching or maybe it was nothing at all. But I just thought it was interesting. You can see the pictures right there. And we talk about a bunch more Easter eggs, possible connections and callbacks. Again, there are possibilities that we saw that may connect from prior episodes and what we got a feel for it. Maybe they're right, but either way, it's a fun discussion video about an awesome show. And that's what this channel is all about. Having fun discussing with a community type feel of an awesome show called The Walking Dead. This is pretty awesome. I think it's awesome. It's a nice comic connection callback Easter egg to the first issue of The Walking Dead. So let me know your thoughts and if you caught it or not. And do you believe it was done on purpose? I don't think The Walking Dead would do that by accident, especially in such a big part of the episode. So what do you think too? Would we be mad at Rick instead of Negan if we followed Negan from the very, very beginning? Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, hit that subscribe button to become a valued member of the PT channel, Walking Dead family. And remember guys, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself, you can do it. It's about love, support, staying positive, making memories. And as always, tell them, Daryl. Yo, we love you guys. Honestly, thank you.